X-Men have warned residents of Ibarapa and Okyogu zone of Oyo State with a no cross sign, asking them to stay away from certain areas in the state. This is despite Governor Sheyima Kende's vow to tackle the security challenges in the Ibarapa and Okyogu zone of the state. The incident was for, has forced some farmers home to avoid confrontation. The governor last week said that, among other measures, additional 200 operatives of the Oyo State Security Network could named Amotekun Corps would be deployed to the region to forestall attacks on residents. But on Friday, some farmers were attacked on their way to the farms by suspected heads, headsmen in Igaga. Some farmers who resided on farm settlements were also sent out of their farmlands. The convener, Igaga Development Associates, Oladokun Oladiro, said many of the farm settlers have been sent packing. Oladiro appealed to the government to quickly ensure that the Amotekun deployed by the government puts a stop to the forced eviction. He said, the headsmen mounted a no-cross zone on farmlands, a signal to warn farm owners and farmers not to step on the farmlands or risk being killed, Oladiron said. They have been reprisals. I am telling you now that we are begging or we are beginning to witness reprisals in Ibarapa. We want to urge the government to quickly instruct Amoteku Corps and send them down to the region. We are aware that they have been deployed ahead, but they have not mounted a resistance against the attackings of the Fulanese, who are very well armed. They have not approached them either for peaceful talks or to resist them in any way. Today, at Kajola axis of the farm settlement that belongs to the people of Idere Ayeti, Takpa side, the Gawaliki Fulani dwellers with heavy weapons were firing at farmers who tried to go to their farms. They have mounted a no-cross zone Every farm, every settler has been sacked and sent back in. People who are staying on those farmlands are back in the town, hopeless. No food, but helpless. A boy and his brother escaped with gunshot wound because they were able to turn back quickly with their motorcycle when they observed the red flag mounted to indicate a no-cross zone by the headers. One of them was hit by the headers bullet. I, Oladoku Oladiro, went there to see the boy and his family spoke with them to confirm the report. I met my people at Bangbagere village, who used to pound yam for us on the farm when we go to the farm. They have been sacked from their farm settlement and they are all back in town. Their settled area is not in town. Those farm settlements are like home and houses for them. Sometimes they don't come to town for a month, working on the farm and residing there. But now they are all back in town. I wonder how they will eat and feed their families because they could not pack anything from the farms but had to rush to leave everything when they started hearing gunshots on the farmlands. They have all moved their belongings. The Fulanese have chased them. We cry to the government and the Amotekun to be deployed. Let them 
the order to quickly put this fire to a stop. Recounting how he escaped from being killed, one of the young farmers who did not want his name mentioned said, we were going to the farm in the afternoon. We observed a red flag by the roadside and when we got there, my brother who is riding the motorcycle advised that we turn back. But I said we should continue the journey to the farm. After passing the red flag, we also observed heavy log by the roadside used as roadblocks and the rider said we should turn back and head back home. But I had to alight from the bike so that he could, he would be able to maneuver the bike and turn easily. So the moment I stepped down from the bike, we just started hearing gunshots aimed at us from a distance. If we had moved another few miles before turning, we would have been, we would have fallen into their hands. We observed that those shooting and running after us were the Bororo headers and were targeting us to kill us. While trying to escape, I sustained gunshots at the back or I sustained gunshots at the back and sustained another injury in my head. He said. He said the intervention of Oloria De, the headhunter who helped to extract the bullets before my son say was saved, or before my son's life was saved. It could have caused more damage. Also speaking on the situation, a resident of Ayete said the crisis began some days ago when a Fulani headsman, Iskilu Waliki, was asked to leave the village because he did not buy the land he was occupying. The demand was said to have infuriated the header who claimed he was a combatant with arms and ammunition. All right, guys, what are your thoughts concerning this particular issue? This is what is happening. And to a very large extent, the government does not seem to be aware, or if they are aware, they have kept quiet without doing anything on this particular issue. And you can imagine what this would cause and the danger it portends for the people. How can Fulani headsmen, you know, mount a no-cross zone and roadblock on another man's land. Of course, that is an invitation to anarchy. Well, the government must rise up to the occasion and end this menace before it becomes something else, or else we may just be heading into war. Well, guys, what are your thoughts? Drop by at the comment section, let's know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Endeavor to share these new stories with your friends, family, relations, and loved ones so they can get to know what is happening around the world and be informed. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the other news. Thank you, and bye for now.